Chapter 4 Despite our deep fascination with the newly discovered cipher, or perhaps because of it, Mom insisted that we keep cleaning until the entire attic was sparkling. Not to brag or anything, but our area of the house came out cleaner than one of those show houses realtors dupe people with. You know what was the most interesting discovery we made as the boss worked us like Cinderella with our rags and spray bottles? It wasn't Jack's fear of roly-polies, or Uncle Paul's draw to the creepy ceramic dolls, or even my mother's ability to kick it into overdrive and clean at what looks like warp speed. No, as mind-boggling as all three of those things were, the discovery of smaller ciphers hidden around every room on floorboards and window trims blew all that out of the water. Every ring of symbols was small and different from the last, but all were obviously connected in some way. If only we could figure out how! All the cleaning didn't help our tired minds, though, no matter how much Mom insisted it would. So after puzzling for hours over increasingly crazy theories, we threw out the last trash bag and gave up for the night. Sandwiches, showers, and sheets were found for everyone, and the night ended early with more questions than answers in an unfamiliar home. As I drifted off to sleep, I had the sudden realization that for the first time in my 12 summers, I had the extreme and undeniable urge to learn about something. It was disgusting. It was weird. It was maybe kind of cool. All I knew was that when I finally fell asleep, I dreamed of secret codes and all the places they might lead. Sometime in the deep, dark gloom of the night, I was awakened from a dream of pirate maps mocking me with their intelligible ciphers by a moaning, thrashing sound coming from the other side of my bedroom. In my sleep-fogged state, I believed for a moment that real pirates had come back to the house to collect their long-hidden treasures before we newbies had a chance to discover what they had left. As I was busy making myself into the smallest ball of a boy possible, my ears strained for any stray sound. My muscles jumped unbidden at every shadow and every moan. I finally realized that the sounds were coming from Jack's side of the room. I had the brief thought that being an only child might be nice. But wait! I realized the noises were not from Jack's imagined attackers, but were coming from Jack himself. Moans, grunts, groans, and mumbles poured from my brother's snoring mouth, piling around him like an invisible ball pit of nightmares. Then, just as I tired of trying to hit his open mouth with stale chips left over from our bedtime snack, just as I was laying back down and adjusting to his annoying new sleeping sounds, Jack sat straight up in bed, opened his eyes, and let out the most blood-curdling scream that I had ever heard. He was obviously terrified of something, and, being the good little brother that I am, it took me at least two minutes before the idea of making fun of him for it entered into my head. Right as I began to lower my jaw, opening my mouth to taunt Jack for his terror over a mere dream, he pierced the night with another one and raised his arm to point shakily toward our lakeside window. All thoughts of making fun of him flew from my mind as my eyes involuntarily followed the direction of his fingers. The moon was shadowed. The lake was calm. The dark island was watching us. A pair of glowing red eyes steadily peered from between invisible, dark trees, and I knew without a doubt that they saw us. It is watching me. I can see its red eyes glowing and reflected in dark water staring across the span between us, never blinking taking it all in, waiting, watching. My shutters begin to shudder, and I pull them closer into my siding, hiding and protecting my new family, enclosing them in my sun warm embrace, concealing them from its penetrating gaze. From the top floor, I hear grunts and groanings. I swear the thing on the island just winked. Sunbright beams streaming between the slats of gently clacking shutters woke me up long before my body was ready. Jack's nightmare had kept us up for hours. Those steadily beaming red eyes hadn't helped the issue any. 
No matter how we tried to reason them away, they kept peering across the darkness. No matter how many times we tried to convince ourselves that they were just buoy lights marking the edge of the island, they kept a steady stare into our room until they merely, finally blinked out in the hazy pre-dawn fog. Well, since I was up and it didn't seem like I would be going to sleep again anytime soon, I decided that I might as well clean the eye crusties gluing my lashes together, get dressed, and wandered off downstairs in search of some breakfast. After a bathroom stop and some food, my biggest priority for the morning would be to walk the stretch of shoreline in front of our house and see if there were any lighted buoys floating around down by the island. I threw on shorts and ratty t-shirt and made my way down the hall to the small room that held my toothbrush. Susan, who was fresh as a daisy and obviously had not been bothered at all by my brother's midnight horror movie reenactment, was curled up on the window seat with a breakfast bar and one of her summer reading books. She gave a wave that was much too peppy for whatever time in the morning it was. Hey, she declared brightly, I don't think there's any hot water left. Susan frowned at my replying grunt, but was almost instantly back to her book, leaving me in a blessed silence with cold water and a fuzzy idea trying to push its way to the front of my exhausted brain.